Back Wisdoms Institute. My name is Scott Fromey. Well, a lot of you have been asking about when are you going to start talking about wild animals? So, here it is. I kept saying, yeah, it's when spring gets here, when spring gets here. Well, spring's here and the wild edibles are coming on. So, I'm going to start doing a series of wild edibles on different clips and just adding it to, to the series. I've been trying to think of what kind of plant should I start out with. Well, the plant that I'm going to start out with is a common dandelion. You think, well, that's, it's not a true wild edible because it's not native to North America. It's not native to Indiana. But it was brought over here by the Europeans and because it's such a useful plant. And so I thought, well, that would be a good one to, to start out with because you can actually eat the flowers the root, and the leaves. So you can't really go wrong. I mean, most everybody knows what the dandelion uh, looks like. But one thing to remember as far as getting started with wild edibles is a lot of these are cooked greens that you're, you're actually going to prepare. And if you don't like cooked greens, well, I don't know really why you'd want to be doing wild edibles. So you got to really kind of develop a taste for it. If, you're, if you don't like spinach or Swiss chard or turnip greens or collard greens or something, a lot of your wild edibles taste just like those greens. So you have to develop a taste for it. And the, actually some, some plants are actually so socked full of, of vitamins that your body has to get used to eating them and used to dealing with it. So the dandelion is one of those. It is so socked full of, of vitamins, um, vitamin A, vitamin C. It was actually the, the Latin word for the big long Latin word that I can't remember what it is. actually stands for cure all ailments. So if you translate it, um, the name dandelion is actually like French called lion's tooth. And denta meaning, you know, like tooth, like a dentist, lion, so denta lion. And somehow we got the uh, dandelion from that. So really this is lion's tooth is what it's called. So the common dandelion. There's probably 300 different varieties of dandelion. but So you, you, all of them is edible. So you can't really go wrong with that. So that would be a good one to actually start out with and learn about. And one way of learning is, is to take it and actually eat it, prepare it, and eat it so you know really what it's all about. And that'll help you remember the plant itself too. So, dandelion, what do we do with it? You could take the flower. A lot of these are closed up because it's evening time and in the, in the morning they open up and, and you'll see bright yellow flowers. You can, you can fry them, dip them in batter and fry them, um, saute them. Uh, you can put them with the greens. Like I said, you can just if a new plant in the spring, when it first flowers the first time, you could probably just eat it like put a regular salad, eat it raw. But after it gets a little age to it and flowers several times, it goes to its uh, yellow flower and then it comes and makes that little puff ball type thing. After it does a couple times like that, it has a tendency to get bitter. So what do you do with the bitter greens? You need to know how to prepare that. Because a lot of your plants out in the wild are bitter. So what we're going to do with like these, I'll cook these in water, cook them down, let them boil for a little bit, a few minutes, and then take them out, rinse them out, change the water, and then do it all over again, cook them again, and that takes a lot of the bitterness out of it. You could also, like what I want to do actually with these is, um, I'll cook these down, change the water, and then kind of like I do Swiss chard, I'll take a little bit of oil in a, in a pan and kind of saute it, put a little garlic in it and season it that way. Oil has a tendency to kind of tame the bitterness down. Like So a lot of times in, in pioneer days or something, they might have used bacon grease or something like that to, to uh, calm down a lot of the bitterness to the, to the wild edibles that they did eat. And like I said, they brought this one over from Europe because it, it's such a good you know, plant. And they relied on it. It was it grows anywhere, you know, most in waste areas. But 
The reason it's so hard to kill, it's got this big long tap root on there. So, can you eat the tap root? Sure, you can eat the root. What they did was this: they they dried it, and then they ground it down and made it like uh, put it with coffee grinds to kind of extend it. Like I said, as they're running low of coffee, coffee was expensive. They dried this and and then ground it up and mixed it with it to kind of extend the coffee. It kind of you, you're not really going to get a you, you can make coffee just strictly from the root. It's not a true coffee. It's just a drink. But like I said, you can experiment with it. Why not? You need everything on there, so why not start with the dandelion? So that's what I suggest to do is start with the dandelion and get used to eating the greens. Uh, if you're trying to develop a taste for the greens, like I said, start out with spinach. Cook spinach is pretty mild. Uh, you can get into uh, turnip greens and go into your collard greens and mustard greens. Uh, Swiss chard, kale, that kind of stuff. If you develop a taste for that, you'll do well as far as um, with uh, wild edibles. So start out with the dandelion. Get the dandelion, experiment with different ways of cooking it. Cook the greens down, add it, try it, eat it, and start with that. So like I said, you can't go wrong with the dandelion. I've been eating quite a few... Uh, Quite a bit of dandelion greens here lately. It's like I said, I like them early in the spring, and and uh, like I said, you can't really go wrong with it. And they're sock full of uh, vitamins. So with that, do a little bit of experimenting, and I'll catch you out in the woods.